Okay, so in this problem, we're told that an, an artillery cannon fires an explosive shell at a velocity of 500 meters per second at a 50 degree angle above the horizontal at a target along the mountainside, which is 4 kilometers or 4,000 meters above the ground. Assuming that the shell travels beyond its maximum height, how far away should the cannon be placed to hit the target on the mountainside? To begin solving this problem, I will begin by drawing a diagram, identifying my given information, my unknowns, and writing out all of my relevant equations. Please pause the video and do this for yourself before proceeding. I've gone ahead and drawn my diagram, and I'm going to label all the information I was given on my diagram. All right, so I know that in this setup, my VI is 500 meters per second, my angle is 50 degrees, my delta Y, or the rise in height at the target, is 4 kilometers or 4,000 meters, and I'm solving for my horizontal displacement, this delta X value. If I put that into a table, it would look like this. So I've gone ahead and added all my information to the table on the right. Now, to solve for my initial x and y velocities, right, because those are also pieces of given information, I'll break the initial velocity up into components like this. So on the left here, I've drawn in my triangle. And so we know that the hypotenuse here is the total velocity, that's 500 meters per second. And the angle that it was launched was 50 degrees. So that means that my vix, right, is going to be 500 cosine 50 degrees, and that means that my VIY is going to be 500 sine 50 degrees. And so I'll add that to my table back on the right. All right, now that I've identified all of my given information, I'm going to write down the relevant equations as well. I've gone ahead and listed all of my relevant equations for projectile motion here. A reminder, these are not new equations. Please take a look at my projectile motion video if you are unsure as how we got these equations. Now, for the most important part of the problem-solving process, now that we have our diagram, our given information, and we've listed our relevant equations, we need to plan our solution, thinking about where we want to end up and working backwards from there to figure out how we start. So, what am I solving for in this problem? I'm solving for the delta x, the horizontal displacement. I only have one equation that has delta x in it, and it's going to be this one. Now, to get delta x from this equation, I need to know two other variables, my initial velocity in the x direction and the total time the object is in the air for. Please note that we already know vix, right? We knew our initial velocity and our initial launch angle. So all we need to do is solve for time. So the very first thing we need to do is solve for time, right? Then we're going to plug in time here, right? And then we will get delta x. So this is a two-step problem-solving process. Not too bad. We're going to solve for time, though, using one of the y equations, right? So if I want time, I can't use that equation for time. That's what I'm trying to get right now. So I'm going to make my way over to the right-hand side here and take a look and see which equation can I use to solve for time. Take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can identify which equation or equations might be most useful given our given information. All right, I've go ahead and copied our equations over here in the bottom left. Um, I'm going to go through them one by one and think about which one we want. This first equation has time in it, so that's a good sign. Um, do I know my delta y? I'm going to go through and make sure I know each of the variables that are not time. I do. My delta y is 4,000 meters. Make sure, again, you convert your units in this problem as well. We were given kilometers, but everything else is in terms of meters, so you will need to be using meters. My initial velocity in the y direction is a known value, and my acceleration in the y direction is also a known value. And so I could, right, so option one, I could use this equation right here. Use the quadratic formula, because you will get a function of t squared. And I will get t. That would be just fine. Let's say we didn't want to do the quadratic formula for some reason, right? Um, let's take a look at our second equation. Here we see that we have uh, vfy squared. We don't actually know the final velocity when it strikes the target in the y direction. Um, we do know, though, our initial velocity. Oh, that. 
And we know our acceleration in the y direction and our delta y. So we could actually, so, you know, we could solve for vf. Now, how would that help us get t? Well, if I look at this third equation, and I probably should have looked at the third equation first, right, because that one actually has time. What I would have seen is I have viy, I have ay, but I don't have vfy. So then that justifies we can use the second equation to solve for vfy and then plug vfy into the third equation and solve for t. So our second option, I'll write just that. Now, either method is totally valid, so you can choose whichever method works for you. However, I will say if you're going to use option two, make a note here, vfy is negative, right? That's because on the way back down, right, I'll show it up here at the target, um, at that last moment right there, my velocity looks like that. So my vy, right, my vfy would look like that. It would point straight down. That'd be my, my vx. So um, when you solve using the second equation, it's vfy squared. So you'll take the square root of both sides. You'll get a positive answer for vf every time. You have to make sure that it, you make it negative when it's coming back down, which is the case in this problem. So if you're going to go option two, make sure you put vf as negative when you solve for vf and then plug the negative vf into equation three. For this problem, um, I've solved a, a quadratic formula problem in my previous video. So let's go ahead and do uh, the, the second method then. So if I were to solve for vf, I'll show that over here um, on the right in blue. vf squared equals vi squared plus 2 alpha y, a y delta y. That means that my final velocity will be the square root of my initial velocity. And again, this is in the y direction. Be careful. If you lose your subscripts, you might forget what you're doing. vi y squared plus 2 a y delta y. That means that vf y is the square root of viy was in this problem 500 sine 50 squared plus 2 negative 9.8 and then my delta y was 4000 meters again and that gives me a final velocity in the y direction of make sure you put a negative sign here you won't get a negative from the square root but you got to make sure it's negative because it is on its way back down um, that gives me a negative negative 261.354 meters per second. And I'm keeping several decimal places here because I will be using this in calculation later. So then if I go ahead and take this VFY and plug it into my other equation here, I'll write that out again here. VAY plus AYT. I'm going to take that and stuff it into here. Um, rearranging for T before you actually plug in is a good idea here. So um, that would mean that uh, T is vfy, I'm going to subtract the viy to both sides and then divide by ay, the coefficient. So then, I'm running out of room here, um, <laughs> t would be equal to vfy, that's that negative 261.354, minus my v initial y, which was that 500 sine 50 over my acceleration. And in this case, my acceleration is negative 9.8 which will give me a time of 65.75 seconds to hit the target. So remember now I'm almost done. My original plan, I'll show it right here. My original plan was to solve for T and then come back and plug it into this equation. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna show that up here in the corner. So delta X equals VIX times T. So now we know that delta X will be that 500 cosine 50 times 65.75 seconds and then we should get our delta x is equal to 21,132 meters away awesome so to recap always begin by drawing a diagram and writing down all of your given information in both the x and the y direction and i highly suggest that you make a table like i did on the right hand side of this problem and split everything up into x and y also, make sure that you split your initial velocity into x and y components and only use those components when you're solving. Also, make sure you list all of your equations for both the x and the y direction. It really helps to see them all out in front of you. Then, before you jump into problem solving, we planned our solution, we identified the variable we were looking for, delta x, and we worked backwards only solving what we needed to in order to solve for delta x. We identified that we needed to find the time to solve for delta x, and we used 
uh, went two equations in the y direction to solve for time, realizing that we could have used the first equation with the quadratic formula, or we could have used those last two equations together, making sure our vfy is negative. Either solution works. Any method that you use is fine. Just make sure you feel comfortable solving these problems. Going through this process, this is the same process for all of these problems. Um, you don't need to memorize anything. Just follow the process, degessa, and you'll be all right. Okay, I hope this was helpful. Please talk to me if you have any remaining questions. Thank you.